Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to talk about why I have started to use the Brave browser instead of Google Chrome, and maybe why you should consider using it too. Now, the first reason I switched to Brave is because it's pretty much just like Chrome, and I really enjoyed using Chrome. Now, you'll notice that the interface is pretty much exactly the same. They have their own custom settings, uh, navigation at the top here, but a lot of the options in the settings are exactly the same. That's because Brave is actually built on Chromium, which is the open source version of Chrome that where people can actually take their code and build off of that with. Now, of course, Brave offers many other features, but a lot of the things that you get in Chrome, you also get in Brave because of that. So you will notice that the tabs will generally work the same. There's also a private mode, which is like incognito mode, and there's also a password manager and auto fill and those sorts of things but that's one of the great things about Brave is that it, it does have all of the basic features that you've probably gotten used to with Chrome but now you can use with Brave. The second reason why I like Brave over Chrome is that it offers shields and by default this will block ads and also data trackers and there's also some other things that it does such as throwing away cookies, upgrading to secure connections and that just means that it will try to use HTTPS instead of just regular HTTP that way you have an encrypted connection to the websites and then it also tries to block malicious code and malicious sites. Now the shields are up here to enable them you can just click on them and there's a little checkbox i'll actually show you these on yahoo and give you an idea of why the shields are actually important so on yahoo it has 45 items blocked but you'll notice that the page has loaded just fine all of the information that you would expect to see on yahoo is still there but if you expand here you can actually see all of the different items that it actually blocked and there's quite a bit and you'll notice that probably a lot of these are just advertisement and it looks like there's geo.yahoo.com so that's probably a geo locator so they're trying to get some of that information from you so that might be a data tracker being blocked but back onto the shields it'll also show you if it upgraded you to HTTPS if there were scripts blocked and such other things but the shields are a really really good thing for this browser and it's something that on Chrome you would have to have an extension for the third reason why I like to use Brave over Chrome is that Brave actually values your data privacy. Now with Brave, the default search engine can be set up to whatever you like, but they often recommend DuckDuckGo, which is a privacy focused search engine. And in fact, when you go to open up a private tab, which I just did, you can see that by default it will search using DuckDuckGo. So if you're using a private tab and you're still searching with Google, your data can still be tracked by Google because you're on Google's website. Now with Brave, they also have a step beyond that, which is opening a private window with Tor. Now, just a reminder, the private windows are like incognito mode in Chrome. So this is just another step beyond that. And Tor is its own video, but essentially it's a, another network with uh, onion layers. This is how it's described, but it is, essentially helps to shield your identity on the web from the people who you're actually visiting. The fourth reason why I like to use Brave is that it offers rewards, and it offers you rewards in the form of its own cryptocurrency, the basic attention token. Now, in order to use the rewards, you will have to actually enable them in the settings. You can see that here. You have to turn that on here, and you also have to turn your ads on as well so that it'll actually start displaying you ads. Now, I've removed my face from the screen so that you could see a notification down here for an ad, and you'll also notice that on the Android device, let me show you that here, you will get notifications up at the top in your notifications panel. And I can't speak for the iPhone, the Mac, or Linux versions of Brave, but you will get notifications up there as well. So essentially, they will block ads for you using the shields, but you can opt into their advertisement system and you will get rewarded for viewing their ads. And these ads do not contain all of the potential malicious code that other advertisements can potentially have because they are just simply notifications that when you open them, take you to the website that was advertised. Now, the reward system is kind of its own video and how that actually works, but you can kind of see what I am I'm expecting this particular month with mine and these of course will vary depending on how much you use it but just the fact that you can use a browser that 
values your privacy and also can reward you at the same time is uh, pretty, pretty special to me. I, I really enjoy using it for a lot of these reasons. And the fifth reason why I like to use Brave over other browsers is that it has a built-in crypto wallet. Now, this isn't really important to a lot of people, but to me, it actually kind of is because I work with these sort of things fairly often, and you can actually have your wallet built into your browser, and you can choose which network you want to work on. So if you're a blockchain developer like myself, you can choose which particular network you want to work with, and if you're using the main network, you can also manage your tokens as well as Ethereum as well. So those are the five reasons and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail here now and towards the end of the video I'll tell you some reasons why Brave isn't completely uh, the most perfect browser. There's always some drawbacks and I'll explain some of those to you but those drawbacks are not enough for me to go back to Chrome. If you're like me and you're interested in the rewards program for Brave, it's actually really neat because just using your browser and receiving these little notifications that you don't even have to click on to actually get rewarded for is pretty neat. So the way this model works is people pay Brave to list their ads and show you these notifications. Now a portion of that money is held by Brave, but 70% or 7 tenths of every basic attention token, which is they use to pay for the advertising, is actually rewarded back to the user. So Brave holds on to only 30% of the advertising revenue and shares back 70% with the people who are actually seeing the notifications. So that's actually a lot of that money coming back into the users who are being rewarded for seeing the notifications. So unlike the other models where you have to forcibly see these advertisements and you have no control over them, here with Brave you can actually block all the horrible ads that you see everywhere and you can just get these little notifications that you don't even have to look at or click on and get rewarded for doing that. So it's actually a really nice model on how that works and as I mentioned it uses the basic attention token. This is an ERC20 token on the Ethereum network so if you're not familiar with that it's really not that complicated. I suggest you check out a video on ERC20 tokens and how you can use that. You can actually manage your your basic attention tokens using the built-in crypto wallet but in order to withdraw them there is one minor drawback in that you have to register through their exchange that they are partnered with with uphold now it's not really that big of a deal to do that some people uh, who are very much into cryptocurrency and the decentralized aspect of it do not like that but if you want to withdraw your rewards currently that is one of the stipulations they are working at other ways for you to be able to use your rewards now one of the main ways they would like people to use their rewards are to reward the content creators so myself I am a verified creator for the Bay, the Brave publisher system and if you go to the Brave Rewards and you click on this while you are on my particular YouTube channel you can actually send me a tip if you have any basic attention tokens in your rewards. Now Brave of course they are also a verified creator so if I wanted to tip them now I could tip them as well just by hitting send tip. So those are how the rewards work. It's actually pretty neat and like I said you don't even have to look at them or click on them but if you do all it's going to do is open up the website for the advertisement. It's not going to send you to anything it's just what the URL is that the advertisers pay to send you to if you click on the notification. I've already talked to you about using the shields which block the advertisements and data trackers using Brave and its other benefits such as throwing away cookies, upgrading your connections, and blocking malicious code. But what's really impressive is how much of this actually occurs. Now, when you open up a new tab on Brave, by default, you're going to get this section that shows you how many ads and data trackers have been blocked. And now, that's quite a bit, and I use my browser quite a bit because I do a lot of work on the internet. But this is a lot of ads and trackers blocked. I would have had no idea that this many items could have possibly been loaded onto my computer if I were using Chrome. Now, the HTTPS upgrades, that's something that's actually really cool because if you are attempting to just type in a website such as uh, youtube.com 
by default, it's going to try to load it with just the regular HTTP protocol. Now, the reason you'll want to use HTTPS is because it uses an encrypted connection, so your information is safer when you're sending data to and from that particular website. So what Brave does, if the website itself does not automatically upgrade you to HTTPS, Brave will also attempt to upgrade your connection to HTTPS with that particular website, and if it can, it will and you can see it's happened 4094 times for myself now it gives you an estimated time saved now it's impossible to say whether or not that's actually accurate I would say that it has saved me quite a bit of time because it does make some websites load much quicker and that is one of the claims that Brave has is that it's actually much quicker than Chrome as well and you also may be wondering how Brave is able to use the Chrome extensions even though it is its own browser. And that is because, as I mentioned earlier, Brave is based on the open source Chromium and this shares a lot of the same resources. So even if you were to go to the Chrome web store and look for extensions, you could scroll down and look, look at the Zoom extension, for example. Let's click on it and it says add to Chrome, but if you click on this, it'll ask you to add this extension to your browser. Now, you can go ahead and do this and it will add it to your browser. I already have some extensions over here loaded. Some of them are actually hidden because I have quite a few, but you can add these extensions just like you would in Chrome. So, a lot of people like Chrome because you can add these extensions, but you can add the exact same extensions on Brave as well. Another claim by Brave is that it's actually much quicker than Chrome as well. So you can actually see some of the charts that they show you here and these are the speeds that they claim to be saving on their browser as opposed to the other ones. Now you can also compare things such as memory usage where it says that Brave is also much better at optimizing your memory and I can say that it is slightly better than Chrome but you still run into a lot of the same issues you do with Chrome especially if you're using a lot of extensions and have a lot of tabs open at once. And there are of course a couple of drawbacks to using Brave and I just mentioned one just a second ago and that is that the memory usage can kind of get out of hand especially if you're using a lot of tabs and if you are using many extensions as well. So the best way to uh, approach that situation is to try and limit the number of extensions that you use at once and also try to limit the number of tabs that you leave open. Now this is just a common issue with Chromium based browsers so it's just one of those things you kinda gotta get used to if you enjoy certain aspects of the browser. Now other ones may be slightly better but this should be an issue that pretty much all browsers have for the most part because data kind of continues to pile up particularly on websites where you are getting streams of data continuously and particularly certain sites have heavy streams of data coming in at once. I know many that I do have a lot of data coming in at once so my memory fills up quicker than most people's. And also the extensions use up quite a bit of memory as well so that's another reason why you should limit those. Another drawback of Brave is that sometimes the Brave shields prevent websites from actually operating as you would expect. Since the shields block third-party data trackers and sometimes the scripts as well, you will notice that some websites actually rely on these third-party scripts to actually operate the way that you would expect them to behave. So in some instances on websites, you will have to actually click on the shields and you will have to disable the shields for that particular website. Now, be careful because this will actually also force a refresh on that particular page. So if you were doing something that you don't want to lose data, on don't change the status of the shields for that page now also if you are not aware already the shields are also set to where you can have custom settings for your shields on every web page so on this particular website my shields are down but if I were to go to a different website my shields would then be up because I have them on by default and these settings for the shields being down are stored particularly just to this website so you can turn shields off for particular websites and not others at the same time
And of course, if you're having any other issues with Brave, I really suggest you reach out to their community support here. They have a lot of active members in their community and they are more than willing to help you get set up and running with Brave yourself. Now, if you're actually interested in using Brave after having watched this video, there is a referral link in the description for this video below so you can use it to actually download and use Brave. I also have probably had some cards playing throughout the video to links as well to referrals as well for the download and you can always just search for brave download and make sure you're going to brave.com and no other site to try and download the browser but that does it for this video i hope you also have a very good understanding now of why i am using brave over chrome now and for the foreseeable future